Greetings, everyone. Welcome in this new live uh, about de dedicated to the motherboard, dedicated to Mongolia and to its art and culture. I hope that you are doing well, that you had a great week and that you learned a lot of things, that a lot of good things uh, happened to you. As for me, this week I got a little bit busy because I uh, rescued uh, Aski from the street. So that was a quite uh, an experience. That is quite an experience because um, I went to the wet. I had, uh, I had, I went to the vet. I had to do quite a lot of things, study about the food, trying to start teaching him and stuff. So today I'm a little bit late for two main reasons. The first one is that it's very snowy outside, so the the light is quite low. I had to wait a little bit more. And the second reason is that this little doggo that you can see here, uh, it's just starting now to fall asleep. So we, we walked around two, three hours uh, today. So I walked a bit more trying to make him a little bit tired so he could sleep uh, during the live so we could have quite uh, a peaceful time. Because as some of you might know, uh, the, the ASCII are very energetic dogs. So that being said, we can start, I will start to answer the, the, the questions that were asked on Discord. And to this, today we have a lot of uh, very interesting uh, question, questions again. So I will start with the question from Zachongo. He asked about the, the maintenance of the murder So how high maintenance do murder tend to be? Compared to a guitar, for example, are they more or less fragile? Uh, how frequent do repairs tend to be needed? And are the repairs easy to, to be made on oneself? Or might specialists be required? So about the, the maintenance of the motherboard, there is not that much uh, things to, to do, except, of course, um, kind of take the dust off uh, every day. Uh, I would also suggest to clean the excess of rosin that you might have on the soundbox uh, after playing. If you play a lot, then um, you will have kind of like a white area on the box. So for me, I, I find it that it's not that pretty. And that might, some say that this excess of rosin on the box might with the time kind of like um, eat the, the lack of the box. So that's good to, to keep it clean. Um, for the strings, usually if it's nylon strings, you can keep the strings easily for one, two, even for three years um, with a normal, not too excessive playing. And if you kind of take care of it, so not putting the rosin on the strings, but only on the bow. Uh, with the horsehair strings, I would say that um, they tend to, to start to be bad and sound a little bit not that good after maybe six seven months um, but also again it depends on the quality of the strings how it was made and how much you play how you play if you play super hard uh, of course the strings not gonna last for that long if you play more with a soft style or something like that then it it's gonna last for for more time so usually for the strings uh, it can stay for like six months to a year or something like that. Then uh, another question that, that comes a lot about the reparation and stuff, it's about the sound post that is in the, um, in the box of the murder uh, This sound post can tend to, to move and fall, especially if you have a change of temperature, humidity, very, very abrupt. For example, if it's very dry today and tomorrow it's it's pouring water and then it's super dry again, uh, the sound post, the wood might move and change a little bit, so it might fall. Um, usually, it's it should only fall in these uh, conditions. If it starts to fall all the time, like every week or something like that, then it means that it's too old and it kind of like... Um, uh, the size reduced too much, so you need to put a new one. Hello Bjorn, how are you? 
So um, basically, uh, if the sound post fall, I would suggest you to go to a cello or violin maker. If you're not in Mongolia, of course, if you are in Mongolia, you can you can uh, go directly to a madrigal maker. But usually, a violin maker, cello maker, they have the specific tools to put the sound post back in place. So it's it's not uh, too complicated. Uh, maybe you can go to the to the um, how to say. You can go to the maker and then see uh, maybe one or two times, ask the person how they make it, maybe buy the tool from them. And then after, after a while, you might be able to do it by yourself. That's not too complicated. So um, that's, I guess, for the main things. Um, so basically for the maintenance of the maru, there is not too much things. It's kind of like a guitar or like a cello, like a violin. Depending on the one you bought, the maru might be more or less fragile. Of course, uh, the head is very fragile. Usually every maru at least broke the head once. <laughs> uh because it, it, it's it's very very fragile but that's not too bad because it's easy to replace it's it's easy to repair and for the um, for the reparation that might need a specialist it's of course if uh, a peg kind of get too loose if it needs to be changed or if the sound box kind of break or separate a little bit it need to be glued together uh, again this kind of operation would need the, the, the help of a specialist because they have the specific tools to make the reparation and to make it right. There is specific glues and, and all that. So uh, if you don't have all this panel of tools and ingredients, I would say uh, that might be a little bit difficult to fix by yourself. So I, ho I hope that uh, this answers the, the questions. So basically, to talk about my murder world with the skin, uh, the skin front, the the head broke once. Uh, I slipped on the ice and I fell like that, and the 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 head just like hit the the ground, so it totally broke. So I, I repaired it. Took me like a week to repair it and and clean the break and all that. Um, and the back the back of the box kind of like separated a little bit maybe for half a millimeter so i had to glue it again together usually this kind of things can happen when the instrument was just made um, this can happen so but that's not too bad of a fix you can just go to a cello or violin maker if you are in europe or in the united states uh, they will be able to fix because well it's it's the same id the same making uh, hello, Birdie, how are you? So that's for the, the first question. Uh, now we'll move to the, to the second question. Ah, thanks. I'm glad you like it. So sorry again for today. It was a little bit late. Uh, as I was saying before, I kind of like rescued the dog. So my schedule is a little bit upside down right now, but it's gonna, it's gonna get steady again very soon. I'm pretty confident. So for the next uh, question that also comes from Discord, it comes from Guillaume and he asked about calligraphy. So where and how to start to learn calligraphy? So that's uh, also again, a very interesting question, especially for someone that is not in Mongolia. Uh, I will talk about my experience for the calligraphy. What I kind of did, um, I took some class here to learn the Mongol Bichik, the Mongol Bichik. So the writing, it wasn't yet the calligraphy because in the beginning we, we usually learn uh, the, the, the main shape of the letter, of the symbol, if I could say. Uh, we draw it by a pencil and kind of with a very like 4B or 6B, 8B pencil. So it's very, how to say, uh, very thick um, writing. So we can also start to learn the, the pressure effect kind of um, because there is some rules, the, the attack of the letter should be very thin. So it's kind of like, a, if, if, it, if this is the pencil, it's kind of like a plane uh, coming on the, on, on the ground, kind of with the pencil. So we start like that, then we push a lot in some area and in some areas, and then it fly again or kind of this ID. So in the beginning, it's with the pencil. And after a while, when this ID, the shape, 
and everything kind of got understood, uh, we can switch to the brush. And for the brush, I didn't really add that many uh, lessons. It was more like my teacher kind of explained me how to, to use the brush, how to use the, the, the ink, uh, how to mix with the water, this kind of stuff. And then I just watched uh, other calligraphies from other artists that we, we could see on internet, on Facebook or whatever, and just try to mimic what they did, understand how the brush works and all that. And that's kind of how I learned. So um, for you, Guillaume, if, if you want to learn, you, we can get in touch. I can give you some advice. I can give you uh, some ideas, some, some maybe some tips on how to start and stuff like that. But it's a lot, a lot, a lot of personal training, personal uh, trying, writing letter, words, thousands of thousands of times. Uh, there isn't really class or stuff like that to really learn the calligraphies uh, because it's very personal. There is the, the movement and everything is very personal. So that's really you to get the brush, get the ink, some paper and try to understand how it works and have some experience. And if you need any help, uh, I can give you some tips and, and, and help you. Um, because I'm, I'm not sure that there is too much information on the net about the calligraphies, and I'm not sure that there is too much uh, other calligraphers in Europe or in the States that really knows how the Mongol Bichik in the calligraphy works. But there is something that I can maybe manage for you uh, if you're interested to learn the Mongol Bichik, but it's all in Mongolian. There is a calligrapher in Mongolia. Uh, she wrote a book to learn how to write the different letters. There is a kind of like model and everything. So if you're interested, I can eventually ship one book like that for you. Her name is Atantuya, if I'm, I'm right. And her book is uh, Oyun Turkhur. So it kind of give, gives you every letter uh, with how to write, which order, very close to how it's made to learn the hiragana, katakana in Japanese. So that's maybe a start for you. And if you need more reference, actually, I could maybe create in Discord a channel with calligraphies and post maybe every day a new picture of another artist or so to give inspiration to you guys. Uh, tell me in the comment if it's something that you a lot of people actually want to have more uh, knowledge about the calligraphies. That, that's something that I can also add on the Discord. So I saw uh, Matt, hello Matt, is uh, asking what are the gears for? So are you asking the gears for the calligraphies or for the metal hole fixing? Sorry, I, I'm not sure for, for which... Um, which part you 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 are asking? Uh, ah, the gears for what are the gears for? I think they might be cakes. Are you talking about that? Ah, okay. Uh, this is curd. Uh, it's dry. It's how to say that's made out of milk. <laughs> that so this. These two are made out of milk. So these one are a little bit sweet. These one are more natural, so more salty flavor. And it's called curd in English. So it's some kind of, not really yogurt, but it, I don't know how to, to explain that, but yeah, the name is curd. So uh, I think it's like C-U-R-D. So you can find uh, you can find some picture and maybe how it's made uh, on internet. You can uh, check it out. The thing is that yeah, it's made with milk, then put in some kind of um, cloth, then packed together, kind of to condense uh, all that. It's not exactly yogurt, but it's kind of the idea. And that then it's dried uh, on the top of the gear and and so on. So that's very. Uh, that's something that Mongolian eats a lot, uh, especially in the countryside and especially in the summer. And it's usually put like that. There is three layer, three, five 
uh, seven or even eventually nine layer for very uh, I would say maybe a king or someone that is very very well known or something like that. So usually it's uh, it's to set the table uh, in a welcome mood and people when they come in the home they can just pick some and eat a little bit. So usually we put the end below like this. So for example, if I give, we put the end below like that, kind of to say, okay, thank you for that. Um, and it's kind of showing respect for the gift that the host is actually giving us. So we take like that, then we take a bit and we can start to eat. So that's, uh, that's called curd. And usually there is in every families, in every gear, on the table or always like that, or it can be some biscuit, it can be some chocolate, depending on the taste of the, the family. So that's uh, more traditionally, of course, it curd, Mongolian uh, milk product. But now nowadays, it's a little bit more mixed with other things. So it's it's kind of like, uh, yeah, again, to, to give this welcoming mood to the people that gonna that gonna visit us uh in the day or whatever so they can come and just take some eat a little bit and we also in parallel offer the milk tea uh, or the tea to the person that comes to warm them up and and all that so that's uh what it is for so i hope that answers uh the questions so i can move on uh so i think that for the calligraphies also the the subject is kind of close so i think that i can move now with the next question that comes uh, from discord so it's coming from coming sang uh, comic sang how often is it to rosin the bow how much do you usually put on there um so for the rosin again it's very it's going to be very um, connected and related to how much you play in the day, um, how you play. So that's the, 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 the two main factors that going to make how much rosin you put on the bow change. And it's also depending on if it's like nylon, nylon string, nylon hair uh, on the bow, or if it's nylon string, horse hair on the bow, of, or if it's horse hair, and horse hair. So um, usually for me, uh, to be honest, I'm not playing crazy every day. Uh, some days I'm not playing. I, some day I'll play maybe five hours. It depends on my free time. Uh, for the rosin, usually I put only on the bow and maybe once a week a little bit or once, once every two weeks, or it's also depend on the, the hair. If the hair is dry, if it's very humid, it's going to change also how much rosin you put. So there isn't any specific rules like you need to put rosin every morning or every three days or whatever. It's really depend. It's, it, it, there is too many factors to give a straight answers for that. The point is you need when you play, if the sound is very soft very whistling there it, it's like it's it's a lacking of strength the, the sound is not um pure or something like that you know like a whistle or or something like that uh then you need to put a little bit of rosin and as i said in 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 one of my previous video into the motherhood i really suggest you to put a bit of rosin try to play a little bit then if it's not enough you can add a bit again then try to play because it's easier to add rosin than to take it off. So it's best to put a little bit, try, oh, the sound is not yet there. It's, it's not um, good enough yet. So, okay, you can put a little bit more. Then you try again. Ah, okay, now the sound is good and then you're fine. And maybe tomorrow you will need to put some again or in a few hours or it's really, it really depends. Also, depending on the rosin you use, if you use a bright rosin, which is usually used um, by violinists, uh, you might need to put more rosin. If you use a dark one, usually us Motorhorch, we use dark rosin, then you might not need to put it uh, every five minutes. So, but in some concert, usually like a two hour concert, uh, musician, especially in orchestra, they put rosin before 
the the beginning and in the in the kind of break time in the middle just to always keep the strength of the sound um or especially also they use this kind of like jumping uh, effect a lot so having a lot of rosin will really help this jumping effect so for me as i play more traditional uh, i play more like old style i'm not really using all those modern violin uh, and cello effect so i don't need to have like a crazy super uh, sharp and grippy bow so for me i like the sound of a little bit loose bow um, and not too much rosin so it's not like too screechy it's kind of like the difference between having a fresh new uh, iron uh, strings on a folk guitar or let, it in, let, it, let the strings kind of rust for a little bit and being greasy and all that and the sound gonna be more like uh, full of bass and a little bit different. So it's really according to, you, to your taste. There is no hard rules. There is nothing that you must or must not do. The only thing is that never put rosin on the strings, only on the bow. So I hope that answers uh, the question for the rosin. And there is some other uh, detail in his question, in Comic Sun uh, question. So in the beginning, my bow hand gets tired because I push the hairs down with three fingers, maybe too hard, I guess. Might be the result of too little rosin. And how hard are you supposed to be ho holding the base of the bow for traditional holding? And how hard is normal to hold the bow hair down? So again, I will take my bow and show you a little bit. So as you can see, the hair are not really uh, tight that much. It's very loose. So you see, I, I, I almost the hair are like floating a little bit. So I play like that. Um, and then for the holding, so I use this holding uh, as you can see so like that and i'm not really putting i don't know too much pressure it's really for the feeling so usually there is that exercise that i like to show to my student it's kind of like all the bow here and on the tip with the other hand then you hold and kind of put pressure you see on the the thumb there kind of to get the balance because the idea it's not about pressuring crazy it's more about uh, smoothness being relaxed and push just what is needed to so um, of course you need to push a little bit but not to the excess of having your finger hurting or it means that it's it's very how to say uh, very stressed there is too much tension maybe in your hand or in your fingers so the idea is like if, if I take a comparison, um, if the finger on the string is pushing, let's say 10 Newton, I just take a random number, okay? If the finger here on the strings uh, is pushing maybe 10 Newton, usually on the bow, it's gonna be something close. So as we don't need to push too strong, too much on the strings, it's usually very soft uh we don't need also to push too much on the bow if we push too much as you might you might have seen in the into the metal show it's gonna be a very creachy sound like it's gonna give you something like that so you don't need to push too much just find the balance and it's really um a balance uh, between the pressure with the finger and pressure with the bow and usually those two strengths are very similar it's not like 10 newton here and one here or one on the string and 10 on the bow the two are very very close so yeah i, I hope that answer uh your question and for the holding for me i hold it like that and i just push a little bit like this so no need to be like super strong like that there is no need for that just a little bit is enough so yeah, it's, it's a matter of feeling and kind of trying, always playing this long bow to understand and feel how it goes, how it works. And so, again, I, I, I will never say that enough, but playing slowly, playing with the full bow 
So you see until the end, not just like I see a lot of people using only this part of the bow and almost never playing this. So really slow, full bow, take a little bit, take a little break, then go back, breathe and relax the shoulder and everything. So that's uh, very important. So I hope that answers uh, the question. The next question is again uh, from Zhang Chongro. I've noticed that on your page for helping people uh, get a murder hole, you also provide a mute for them. So the question is, what does the mute looks like? Um, how to put it and what does it do? So indeed, when people buy a murder hole from me, usually I include some uh, little uh, option things because it's not expensive it's uh, and it's quite helpful so I usually add um, clothes to clean the box and a soft clothes specifically for for instrument to clean the the instrument and take out the rosin and all that always have a clean instrument uh, it's also a way to show the respect to the instrument I also add of course a set of strings uh, to change if ever uh, there is a need in the near future, but also about the strings that not too good to keep them rolled for too long because then after they, they, they're going to keep this uh, rolled shape, it's best to get new strings and then put it, putting them almost like directly in the days or in the few days that follows. Um, and then, yeah, I, I add a mute and of course some rosin. So for the mute, it looks like that. So that just a little kind of like hard caoutchouc or plastic kind of like stuff. So that's how it looks. I hope you can see. Uh, so first, what does it do? Basically, it's kind of killing the treble of your murder horn. It's kind of uh, gonna take out all the high notes, all the high um, vibration harmonic, if I could say. And also it's gonna prevent the sound to resonate too much. So basically once you put the, the mute on your murder hole, the sound will less tend to, to go through the walls because that's kind of what we want uh, to avoid annoying our neighbor, especially when we start to learn the instrument. So what it does, it's kind of killing the high note, the high vibration in the, it's kind of like if you have a hi-fi uh, equalizer, you take out the treble. Basically, you're gonna keep only the bass and the medium. That's kind of the idea. And also prevent the sound to go through the walls. So how to put it? So there, you have the mute here. Mm -hmm. So, it, Diana. So you put it like that between the two strings and then kind of, I, oh, I will put that down a little bit so you can see. Then uh, that's a new one. So you might need to soft to make it a little bit softer just to make it easier to put it. So like that. Okay, you put it between the two strings and then kind of like clip it on the bridge. So that will give you something uh, like that. I hope you can see uh, how it is. And once you did that, basically the sound gonna be very uh, mute. That's the point of it. And to take it off, also, you pull, go very soft when you're like, uh, take it down like that because it can maybe make the bridge slip and fall. So be very careful when you use the mute, especially uh, if, the, um, if the bridge is not perfectly, you know, aligned to the top. You, I just have a matter of reminder, you should have like here 80 degrees. So to be sure that the bridge is not like moving and falling down. So I hope that answers the question for the mute. 
Um, so basically, that's it for, for, for this part. Then uh, the last question that we have today from uh, the Discord, let's see if there is some, okay. The last question is coming from Matthews, um, also from Discord. So oftentimes, Murderwatch can be seen doing sort of whipping effect, whipping motion with the bow. Uh, that results in accenting the note. Can you elaborate on this technique and can you provide some exercise to practicing it? So indeed, this wiping effect um, is kind of at the core of the, the, the murderer style, the murderer soul. Uh, that's the idea of how the murderer should sound, always having very long bow. And actually, the idea behind this wiping effect is not exactly that it's a wiping effect. A lot of uh, beginners, they think that this movement comes from the wrist or comes from the shoulder. And this is not the case at all. It all comes from the fingers, actually. The thing is that once uh, you reach this very soft um, wrist, doing this kind of fingering, if I could say, um, just going to make the rest of the arm move like that, actually. So the idea behind this effect is not to try to wipe your bow, to make the whipping effect with your bow. The idea, uh, so I will take it down a little bit, so I hope Spark will not freak out or hold while I play. <laughs> So what you what you're talking about I guess that's like that So the idea behind that is to kind of like do this tack 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 so if I if I start here tack 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 so what you can do is use a metronome uh, and like one, two, three, four, and you go back one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And then one and two and three and four and one and two and kind of like that. So don't focus on moving the wrist. Don't focus on, on, on trying to mimic this kind of waving bow because it's just gonna build tension and it's it's not gonna give you the right sound all this technique comes just from the accent with the finger and as you became um and as you will become more relaxed and more soft in your arm in elbow wrist and all that this movement just just gonna come but the root of it is really this finger uh, accent this finger pressure so that's very important uh, not to to move with the wrist actually so Bjorn is just asking now I tried once to mute my instrument once by putting close pin on the bridge because I had heard that violinists sometimes do that so actually what you can do indeed is to put some clothes there uh, you can you can add some um, I don't know yeah you can maybe put a t-shirt or a scarf or something with cotton or uh, kind of like a thick clothes roll it and put it there and yeah this also really gonna mute the the sound of the instrument it's really gonna lower the volume and actually there is another trick that you can do if you don't have clothes or if you don't have a mute it's to change the position inside your legs so i will show you basically usually we should have the metal hold very high like that so the sound can really be projected outside and be sent to to the to the audience but what you can play if you really want to to mute, you can kind of like put the, the instrument inside your legs like that, 
so that's that's not too comfortable to play. I would not recommend that you play like that too much, but that can be a way to absorb uh, the sound of the instrument. So, okay. Would you mind playing the motherboard with the mute on just a bit so I can sort of hear how much quieter the sound actually get? So the thing is that the sound will not get too much quieter. It's more like the, um, the frequency of the sounds, it's gonna cut the height. So if I play now, maybe just the double strings, with now there is no mute, so just so you can see, we'll put that a little bit down, okay? So now there is no mute. And now I will put the mute. Okay. So as you can hear, I hope you can hear on the video, I, I'm not sure that's gonna be super, super uh, clear on the video, but as you can see and hear, what it does, it, it's not really putting the volume that much down. It's, it's still like the, the same volume kind of, but it's more like uh, the sound is, is not escaping from the instrument. It's kind of uh, sticking inside. So if you play, Basically, if you don't have the mute, that's most prob probably that people in the next room or in the next floor will hear it. But once you put the, the mute, there is very uh, almost no chance that people around, it's not good, the sound not gonna get out of the, of the room. So that's really what this little uh, thing is doing. And as uh, I think that was Bjorn, uh, Bjorn that, that talk uh, about this cloth. Uh, you can put the cloth also on the tail, on this part, there. And it's also gonna help uh, mute the sound a lot. So I, I hope that now about this mute thing, uh, that's much uh, clearer. Um, and about the, the weeping technique, that's very important. Uh, that you you keep in mind that it comes from the fingers. Don't make the mistake to move like this with a very stiff um, stiff movement. Uh, it's more like moving like this, pressuring with the finger. So to connect also with the previous question on how strong we should be with the bow and all that, you can see that it's very important to be relaxed to be very loose. And then it's kind of like dancing, you know, like this bilge, and always be very, very soft and, and relaxed. So I think that's it for today's live. Um, if any of you guys have a question, feel free now to ask it. If you have uh, something else to add or, or to share. If not, then it's gonna be done uh, for today. I hope that you enjoyed, that it was interesting and that uh, those these new questions found answers. Um, we should find, we should meet together, together again uh, next Saturday. So maybe I will change the time a little bit according to that little uh, wolf that I just rescued. So, so I think that's it and we'll see each other again very soon. If you want to join the Discord, links is in the description. If you have questions, if you have any interest, anything to share, join us on Discord. The community really start to be super good now. And if you have other uh, question, put comment below, subscribe to the channel and all that. So I think that's it. Have a good week and see you next Saturday. Bye-bye.